everybody, it's time for another edition of the Romania Show. Yes, the greatest show in Romania in the English language, of course. Uh, you'll notice I'm still fiddling around with the layout. Uh, that's just because we're, you know, only a couple weeks into the show here. And as things go on, I realize that my face is getting buried in all the different texts and the overlays and the things crossing over and I go, yikes, I'm running out of screen real estate. So we're going to uh, fill it around with that till we get a situation that we like and then we're going to stick with it and that's going to be awesome. And in case you are not in Romania, I will tell you, uh, it's not very difficult to realize that it is summertime out there. It is burning hot all the way from the north to the south to the west to the east to the mountains to the ocean everywhere it is burning hot if you like hot weather and you are not in Romania and you want to come here and get some of this sunny hot summertime weather it's fantastic so uh, it's quite interesting because last year right around this time it actually got kind of cold and I remember on the 4th of July last year I was actually wearing uh, a winter jacket <laughs> I mean, I had a, a little meeting with some Americans here last year, and I was outside on a, on a balcony with some people, and I was wearing my winter jacket. So this is a proper summer. Of course, some people are complaining, um, as they always do. That's Romania. But uh, it's good to see this, the plants growing, and uh, good to see everybody else following along with the show. If you want to... Uh, at, join in on the conversation, especially Twitter. You know how to do that. Just use the hashtag The Romanian Show. It's not too hard. I'll start off. I uh, don't want to get too bogged down into it. Yesterday I spent 30 minutes talking about it, but uh, Ponta, clearly a plagiarizer. I finally got to see the actual text, not just, you know, one or two little blocks of uh, perhaps quoted material. I mean, I, uh, you know, I have a blog. I quote other people. Of course, I put it in called it Gile Mele in Romanian, it means quotes. Uh, it's very obvious when I'm quoting from someone because I'm an honest person and I quote from them. Well, this guy, Ponta, I mean, just outrageously, obviously, a plagiarizer. And uh, at one point, you know, from one of the books that he was copying, 35 pages, you know, continuously, no breaks, no modifications, not even one comma moved or anything. Just word for word copy from this guy. No quotation marks, no footnotes, no citations, you know, put down there. And of course, Ponta and his uh, people, you know, and his supporters, they all got these. I saw a guy last night, I mean, this guy had some balls. You know, they're saying, hey, dude, you know, here's the proof, here's the original text, here's uh, Ponta's dissertation, 35 pages, especially in a row, you know, nonstop. And the guy said, well, you know, I'm sure there was supposed to be quotation marks. Perhaps it was just a printing error. <laughs> you know, come on now. And, uh, you know, at the end of the dissertation, it's just, you know, a small one-page list that says, oh, sources, you know, they call it the bibliography, uh, you know, as though that's okay. Like, I mean, when you're reading this thing, you have no idea. There's no indication when, you know, it's Ponta writing and when it's supposed to be everybody else. And... You know, it's it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, they call it penibil in Romania. It's shameful. It's uh, some scandalous shit, basically. And the worst part is he's not even apologetic about it. He doesn't care. He's like, oh, well, I'm not really a doctor. Uh, you know, not like anyone ever thought he was a medical doctor. He'd be like, oh, I'm not really even an academic doctor because I don't really use it. Yeah, well, you know, if your, you know, resume includes prime minister, why, you know, doctorate's kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, oh, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to go blood. Come on, man. It's and you know some people are just supporting him and uh, you know I saw the original text he, he copied it it's obvious and, and you know one of the surest I mean I told you when I saw him live that was yesterday's show when I saw him live I knew he was lying later after I did the Romania show I saw the actual text and um, you know he's clearly lying and uh, you know one of the sure signs is that you know Romanian textbooks are or actually this was some academic type books, you know, most Romanians don't really understand like OCR, optical character recognition and scanning and that kind of stuff. So if you have a book that you want to copy, you actually got to sit there and pay somebody, I'm assuming. I can't imagine Ponty's too arrogant to, you know, sit there and page after page write down what, you know, the original guy said. So he paid somebody, 
or I'm guessing that he paid somebody to you know type out these 35 pages or whatever you know humongous passages that he was copying and whoever was typing it they made a couple mistakes and, and it's it's amazing because you can see it because like page 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 word for word and then uh, you know one word will be misspelled and you know it'll change the meaning and yeah I'm agreeing with it. her all right yeah sweet uh, <laughs> Kids, you want him to go to jail? Yeah, all right, me too. Awesome, yeah. So, uh, you know, the guy's a thief, and it's really obvious, and he made little mistakes that were just, like, typos. I mean, they're, like, uh, they call scribal errors, you know? Just, it's outrageous. But anyway, Ponta, totally un unapologetic. He doesn't care, and he his big thing right now is that on the 28th of June, which I guess is coming up in about a week now, uh, there's the big European Council meeting. And I should add here that uh, the German press, you know, bravo to them, they've been on this point of plagiarizing things since the very beginning. It turns out there was a long interview with one of their um, chief journalists of the Frankfurter paper, which is a very extremely influential and popular newspaper in the German-speaking world. You know, he was talking about, he's like, hey, they asked, hey, where did you get the uh, information? Because you published the article the same time as Nature did. Now, of course, me, I speak English, so the Nature one was what really hit me. Plus, Nature is a very respected journal. But, you know, the German newspaper, I know about it. I just have to use Google Translate to read most of it. But, you know, they were, had an interview today with a journalist. They said, look, I got this information, you know, original documents myself. And I'm the one who did the research alongside the Nature guy. And, you know, it's unbelievable. It, 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 the, the plagiarism that Ponta did is actually worse, is actually more egregious than the former German Minister of Defense who resigned after he was caught plagiarizing, and the former president of Hungary, what was that, last year? His name is Paul Schmidt. It's kind of, kind of a German name, but he's a, he used to be the president of Hungary. He resigned after being caught, and in both those cases, there was actually less plagiarizing going on. Very similar case, though, you know, academic papers being stolen and all that kind of stuff. Just outrageous. And the German press has been covering this. They've been doing a great job. I should say, by the way, that um, if you do speak German, that or care to use translating software, that literally the best coverage of what's going on in Romania, especially the secret stuff, the truly journalistic uh, inquiries have been all done by the German press. The German press has been all over this pont of plagiarizing thing, doing their original research, not just reprinting what other people said. They're doing their research. Long interview with the uh, a journalist today, hotnews.ro. I guess you got to read many to read that one because it's not in English, but, you know, they also uncovered the CIA black prisons in Romania. That was the German press. You know, these guys are doing a great job. And, of course, who reads the German press and certainly speaks German is the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who is going to be, you know, basically the big wig, the big chief person here at this uh, June 28th conference of the European Council meeting. Now, Ponta is so arrogant that not only has he not resigned, not only has he not apologized, and not only does he not give two craps about the fact that he's, you know, a thief, intellectual thief, which is probably the worst kind, you know, at least a guy stealing bread, oh, you know, he's hungry! You know, okay, the guy's hungry. You know, it's going in his belly. What's the guy's doing stealing my work for? You know? But Ponta already today, I mean, this guy is just unbelievable. He, he has a plane, an airplane that is, I guess, being prepared to carry his highness to the European Council meeting. And he specifically said in the newspaper today, Bosescu, the president of Iran, he's not welcome on the plane. In other words, you know, I don't even want him on the same plane as me, even though, you know, he's still the president of the country. It's not like he's, you know, I don't know. So Ponta, not resigning, doesn't care, and he's going to this big Brussels meeting on the 28th, and that is to represent Romania. And, uh, you know, Basescu already, as I mentioned last week on the Romania show, he already proved, you know, as far as I'm concerned, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that uh, this particular meeting, which is involves his estate, is for the president. And, you know, here's the thing about it. And I guess I really never got into it because the European Council, uh, the European Union has several different organizations. Some of them are clearly legislative in nature. There's the European Parliament, which members, you know, Romanian 
go to that and they're members of the European Parliament. There's other stuff that's passed that has to do with legislation, like regulations and you know tariffs and all this other crap. Well, Ponta is already the Prime Minister who is in charge of the legislation in Romania. He's already going to another meeting in Brussels on the 26th, which is for people who you know make the laws in their individual countries because they're going to debate certain laws and regulations. The meeting on the 28th passes no laws. It will pass no laws. It will have zero effect on any legislation or rules changing or anything else. All it is, is a meeting to discuss things. Now those are important, of course, right? Especially with this Euro crisis going on and the monetary problems that Euro, Europe is having. So Angela Merkel, who of course speaks German, as well as, you know, half the educated world here in Europe. You know, they're all reading these things and they're going, look at this, who is this guy Ponte? What is he gonna do? What is he even doing here? Oh, you know, and it's just like this guy, you know, it's like Romania, it's like, you know, they always screw everything up, you know, because people are paying attention to this. People don't care if, you know, I don't know, Romania has a minor little scandal or, you know, the heat wave or whatever. No, this is serious stuff. Two extremely respected, you know, publications, Nature and, you know, FAC, the German newspaper, they both say, hey, your prime minister is an academic thief. Pump turns around and says, it was me. And anyway, the only people who are allowed to judge whether it's plagiarism or not are this academic committee, ethical committee, and guess who nominates all the members and just, you know, nominated them and put them there a couple of weeks ago? Me! The Ponta! So, you know, absolutely ridiculous. Whew, it's unbelievable. So that's what's going on in Romania, I mean, with Ponta. Uh, elsewhere, uh, Diacono, who was the Minister of Culture, he um, resigned yesterday after giving a very bizarre little uh, fall. Uh, I, I fall on my sword for you, Mr. Ponta. You know, he said, nobody forced me to resign. I just resigned because, you know, I just fall like it. Well, that's a bunch of crap. Uh, the, the situation with that, as I've mentioned on the Romanian show, is number one, he's being investigated because he clearly used his influence to get his wife a high-paying job at some theater making, you know, God knows how many thousands of euros per month. You know, basically humongous salary for doing nothing. And then number two, you know, Ponta's getting a lot of heat from, you know, the intellectuals. You know, a lot of people like to sneer, oh, the intellectuals. Well, you know, intellectuals, hey, I'm an intellectual, right? I got glasses and I read books. You know, and they got mad because Ponta took the ICR, the Romanian Cultural Institute, you know, out of the direct, I guess, control of the president, because the president gets to nominate the, the head of the ICR, President Pasescu in this case, and you know, whoosh, we're moving it over to parliamentary control, aka Ponta's control, and the theory behind that was number one, they were wasting a bunch of money, and number two, there was no transparency, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, I'm not saying the guy who runs it is some kind of saint, because he's not, but he's like, dude, we barely have a budget at all. All we do is put on, you know, plays in Oslo for a few drunken Norwegians, Oh, well, it was very nice. Romanian, Romanian poetry looked you up, you know. And he goes, and by the way, here's our entire expenditure, expenditures for the last couple of years. Have a look. It's all, it's all right there. It's all accounted for. Oh, blah 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 blah. So Diacono, the cultural minister, resigned. So now we're on the hunt for a new minister of culture. So already we've had um, one education minister uh, nominated withdrew because she was caught being a lawyer and a plagiarist. Another one was nominated, approved, installed, or whatever the correct term is for, got the job officially. Mr. Mong, Mr. Mongo, serial plagiarist. Uh, I think there's, he's up to 10 different academic papers now that he's clearly been plagiar plagiarized. And as I mentioned before, Ponta installed his own people in the ethics committee at once so that Mong doesn't get chewed up. Uh, until after the elections in the fall. So, Mom, whoosh, you're out of here. The third idiot uh, education minister can barely speak in a coherent sentence. I speak better Romanian than he does. Uh, another minister who uh, was nominated but never approved because uh, his name is Ali Star, Victor Ali Star. He was, had to, you know, he wanted to withdraw his nomination for this guy because it turns out he's banned by law from holding office. Why? Because three years ago, he was uh, convicted of, you know, 
trafficking and influence and all this other crap. And the court specifically said, dude, you got three years. You're banned from office. And that three years doesn't end until August anyway. Well, guess what? Ponda withdrew his name. But he secretly said, oh, as soon as the August comes around, he's back and he's going to get the job. And now we got the culture minister, you know, down the drain. And these guys, these, you know, it's unbelievable how shameless they are. They're like, it's just bad luck. I don't know what happened. I don't know how these things happen. Just bad luck. That's all it is. Wow. It's crap. What it is. They do no research on their own, guys. Um, you yeah, know, they don't. Yeah, Ramey is like, I, I, I seriously, you know, I, I was, it's on my blog, you can read it, I'm not going to give you too much detail about the, the economist who's my mortal enemies when it comes to Ramey, they were saying, well, Ramey is, you know, they're actually not as bad off as they could be because they're so backwards, which, uh, backwards is such a racist, elitist term, but what they're saying is that a lot of Romanians still, you know, live the old way, they live on a farm and, you know, throw food out the back door to chickens and you know they, they don't have this you know industrialized compartmentalized starbucks you know, just in time delivery kind of life and it turns out that when the economy sucks and the whole world's going to sh down the toilet which it is that the way of life in Romania especially for those people is actually protecting them and they're better off than if they moved to the city and learned you know windows whatever number we're up to and, you know, internet, you know, iPhone crap. No, you stay on the farm, and guess what? You're actually doing better off. And the whole entire economy is doing better because these people are doing that. Because, you know, they're not running around the cities homeless and unemployed. And, uh, which is good. You know, I, I don't know. For me, I don't even think it's backwards. I think it's actually quite a sustainable way of life. You know, hey, let's see. Hmm. Uh, they managed to live like this for, you know, 500 years. Oh, no, that's not a sustainable way to live. We gotta build these highways. We gotta build, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of crap, giant factories. That's what Romania always does. You know, that's the like communist mentality. See, the communist mentality comes from, you know, Stalin and uh, Lenin. Because, you know, Marx is long since dead, but he said, Russia, you know, when the Bolshevik Revolution happened in 1917, they were extremely agricultural country. And I mean agriculture in the sense that, you know, everybody's got their two chickens and a pig and no large-scale agricultural operations. So, you know, we're not going to win any wars. I mean, which they were, of course, they got their butt kicked in World War One, And they said, we're not going to win any wars if we don't do something we want. So Stalin and Lenin, for also ideological reasons, they said we got industrialized. And industrialized means build the factories big as you can. Bigger the better. The more... Steel, we're cranking out the better. Blah, blah, blah. So, the neo-communist, I guess you could call it, the actual communist way of things, including, you know, during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, when, you know, all these countries in Eastern Europe, including Romania, were communists, the mentality was, the more factories, the better. Poland, full of factories. Ceausescu started borrowing money from the IMF in the 70s. Why? So they could build more factories. And, of course, his whole entire dream was to move everybody out of the countryside, and get them all in the cities and choo-choo, working on those factories. I mean, my old apartment was specifically built, specifically built just for railroad workers and it has little, you know, logos from the railroad company right on the front gate. <coughs> you know, so, you know, that was the old mentality. And even today, you know, first we're made, says, oh, uh, it's a shame all our people are agricultural, you know, hicks. That's the first mentality. And number two, we've got to modernize our farming uh, operations, which constantly you hear people saying that, both Romanians and other people, and they're always saying, oh, we got to, you know, oh, there goes the ding-dong light again. We're, oh, we're going to have to get a new studio here soon, huh? Yeah. And um, you know, they always say, oh, we need giant farms. And they have a couple of Romanians. They're disgusting. They're the same as the ones in America, you know, with 20,000 hogs all crammed in a concrete pit and you know, producing gigantic amounts of waste and of course sick animals and their disease and everything else. But you know, oh, bro, over modernized. Well, without that much modernizing and without that much giant farming and without a whole lot of modern materials, including, you know, tractors and stuff, well, guess what? Romania produces a ton of food. I think uh, last year they were number three in wheat production and like number five in corn production or maize. 
Yeah, man. Boo hoo, we're really doing terrible around here. Well, everybody's doing just fine the old way. But, you know, then the second thing I always want to do is build a factory. Well, there was a giant factory here in Cluj. Made telephones for uh, Nokia. Well, the problem with factories, of course, is Nokia goes, hey, well, we got a better deal in, you know, China or Hong Kong or something. So we're going there. See you later, suckers. And then all these people who all they knew how to do was work in a factory and, you know, choo choo, move the machinery around. Well, now they're out of a job. So that's really not the way to go. And, you know, men just can't get their finger out of their butt to figure it out. But, another news. Uh, I noticed uh, there's a new report from the Fund for Peace, which is uh, one of these NGOs that well respected, although sometimes their methodology is a little wanky, but um, they have what's called the failed state index, and essentially every country in the world's on it. Uh, doesn't mean you're a failed state just because you're on the list, but you know they measure all kinds of things like war and you know social instability. Well, rem instability, excuse me, because I'm not speaking English again. A lot of people don't realize that half the reason I'm doing this show is just like, whoop, oh, and we're back. Half the reason I do this show is just because. Uh, Oh my gosh, we gotta fix it. I'm going crazy. Half the reason I do this show is because uh, it, it helps me um, speak English because I don't speak English that much.